Well, I finally got my Subi motor back together with its shiny new heads. How awesome is that? Anyway, now I just got to chuck the timing belt on. It's a bit of an art, this, especially when the engine is still in a Subaru vehicle. Because basically, unless you remove the uh, air conditioning condenser and the radiator, uh, <laughs> you're going by feel almost. And a proper timing belt replacement involves putting a new water pump on. And <laughs> as you can imagine, that is a prick of a job. So, uh, isn't that so? Um, I only did the timing belt on this uh, 12,000 k's ago, so it's already got a nice new uh, GMB Japan, that's original material, um, water pump on it, as well as all new rollers, and heads now have new camshaft seals. So now I've uh, just got to whack the timing belt back on it. We've got it right there. It's uh, only been on long enough that the well, the writing's still there, and you can see it's got the index marks on it. So I'll show how all that works. Now, to actually remove one, I mean, you could be lazy if you weren't reusing it and just cut it off. But uh, I remove them by just unbolting one of these idler pulleys here and uh, you've got to be very careful because as the bolt sort of comes to the last few threads with the tension of the belt still there um, what tends to happen is the tension will pull those either pull that one up or push that one down and it can damage the threads and you're in uh, a world of hurt if that happens so uh, it pays to um, Excuse me, I'm trying to make a movie here. It pays to um, uh, keep a bit of tension on the belt with your hand when you're um, removing that. I think I did take some footage actually of when I uh, removed the belt, so if I did, I'll uh, copy and paste it right here. Alright, so the first step is to remove the tensioner. That normally sits... Uh, just there like that, so I've just taken the two bolts out and removed that. What it does is it pushes on this uh, pivoting uh, tensioner here, roller, and uh, that's what keeps tension on the belt. Now, um, it needs uh, retracting, and you can see it's got a hole in the, um, the little piston part, as well as a hole in the housing. So it has to be compressed and uh, a pin put through that. Um, so I'll have to take it up to the vise and do that. Alright, so I've got that in the vise. I'm just slowly compressing it now. You've got to do it in very small gradual stages. Uh, it's a hydraulic cylinder inside. And um, basically if you just try and wind it straight up, you'll just blow the seal out and ruin it. Um, it's very slow and gradual. Uh, usually takes about five minutes. You can just get a, about an eighth of a turn at a time and uh, just keep going till the hole lines up. Then I've just got a, uh, I think that's a 516 rivet or something there. All you need is a nail or a pin or something that fits in both holes. And once it's lined up, uh, you can drop the, the pin in and it's good to go. Alright, so the tension has uh, got the pin pin in it and it's bolted back in place. I've removed that bottom uh, roll of tensioner there. And I've lined up the uh, two cams and the crank. Now, unfortunately, the... Uh, Autofocus on my camera doesn't work anymore, but uh, you can see there's a little notch in the crank there. The matching one in the uh, <coughs> plastic cam cover there. Uh, same deal on the other side. Got a uh, little notch in the cam gear there, and a matching one in the uh, 
back backing plate and then the crank you can see it's got all these notches here which uh, is for the um, crank position sensor there oh, that's a magnetic pickup but you can see one of them has got a little notch like the cams have see there's there isn't one on any of the others it's only on that one and there is a little notch in the uh, crankcase where the um, cam crank sensor bolts in place it's very hard to see because my stupid piece of shit camera won't focus but yeah that's where it is so they're lined up they're lined up and they're lined up so now I can chuck the belt on after much cursing and swearing I managed to get it on it's quite often a lot easier to get it on with that one off as well you might have to rock the pulleys a bit uh, to get it all in place but one trick I do is they'll want to jump off the cams no matter what you do so a little bit of cardboard so the belt doesn't get damaged and a pair of vice grips on each one that'll hold them in place on the cams you can see it's still lined up there on the um, crank so now I just got to uh, take a lot of attention off it <laughs> and bolt that last roller back in and that is a really tricky job to do without cross threading that bolt um, so yeah I'll be back after much cursing and swearing well that went on easier than expected um, there wasn't that much tension there uh, is what I remember last time but anyway I've uh, got that on so with enough tension there I've removed the vice grips and the cardboard you can see the uh, index marks on the cams and the arrow on the belt are lined up as well as the uh, um, arrow uh, the index marks there you can see it looks a little bit out of alignment but uh, once I release the tension it'll all line back up again one thing I did forget to mention is uh, you'll see both the cam belts have arrows and the crank has an arrow there um, they're actually the top dead center marks I think uh, trouble is though is when you line all them up with the um, index marks uh, one of the pistons is mid compression stroke I think and it just the whole thing wants to keep rotating so that's why they've made the second lot that you use for lining up the timing belt so all I gotta do now is pull the pin so to speak and uh, it's good to go